seems to me, as I stop and think about it, um, you know, looking back over your lives individually and indeed collectively as, as free societies, Australia, America, other free societies, um, it's critical that we learn the lessons from the mistakes we've made, the things we've got wrong. That's one part of it. You don't erase it. I think that's part of what you're saying. If you just edit it all out because you want to say, yeah, uh, um, you know, well, that person uh, kept slaves, so they were totally evil. We'll pull a statue out, we'll obliterate it, and we'll make our feels like we're the inheritors of an illegitimate society. Uh, yeah. And then it's much easier to say, well, we're so illegitimate, we ought to lurch in a completely different political direction or whatever. So the first thing I'd, I'd say is that I think we're in agreement that you've got to learn from the bad things and then try and learn from, you know, correct those rather than Pretend you can reinvent yourself completely in a vacuum. But the, the other part of it, I know if I look back over my own life and think about it carefully, and I haven't kept, I've only kept very cursory diaries, but if I were to do what you've done, there'd be times when I'd think, strike. You know, I wonder whether that person will forgive me. And there'd be other times when I'd be thinking, gee, I treated that person badly, I need to forgive. And Jonathan Sachs, who died recently, the, the chief rabbi in Britain and in the House of Lords, he's a brilliant thinker and writer. He's been quoted a lot in Australia at the moment. It's quite interesting. But he said, we're in danger in our culture of forgetting how to forgive. Yeah. And, and it seems to me that a family can't operate, a, a person can't be a fully functional human being if they can't forgive and accept forgiveness. It's a yep. two-way street. And maybe yep. we can't as a culture either. And then you've got the added problem in the social media age the old saying was forgive and forget. You can't forget anymore because it's all recorded. Right. Somebody will bring it up 30 years later. Well, you've brought it up willingly in a way that's very constructive. But what are your thoughts on forgiving and forgetting and their importance? To Great question. Um, you can forgive and you don't have to forget. But if someone is seeking real retribution, Again, not tyrants. Don't we be fools with our, our freedoms? But if someone screws up and is seeking real retribution, they, they've earned, they, as humans, they've earned the right to say, great, batter up again. I mean, way to come back in the game. You learned you had time to grow. Thanks, you, 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 you see that. Um, I think what, what, what I hear you bringing up and, and and this is my version of what I understand to be. We, we, we see everything as a contradiction. If it's a hot, if it's a topic that has the microphone right now, you said the word illegitimize it, it, it. If someone in the past was a, a, a slave owner, do you just illegitimize and erase them from history? Does it mean that they, how much does it mean they were an evil person or how much does it mean that's where they grew up and what they knew or they were ignorant of? Right now, we just go, you're out. Persona non grata. You don't exist. And I think it's unfair to the ones that are saying, no, we the oppressed are saying, get rid of that. No, it's actually more unfair, I think, to the one saying I'm being uh, 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 oppressed. It's a part of that victim victimization thing. So, no, let's shine the light on this. We don't don't make it trend. Don't make it where we can't see it. Let's actually look at it and learn from it. Um, let's have the courage to look it in the eye. Me and you on both sides that we agree. Maybe my ancestor was one thing, and you're the one saying you were the the oppressed. Let's both look at that and go, huh? Well, that's not who I am today. I'm like that's not who I am. you are today. Well, let's go forward here, build our way out. Let's look at that because we don't want to repeat that. Let's evolve from that. That's more constructive. And that's not illegitimizing. It's judging it, but it's not illegitimizing it. It's having some discernment going forward with choices, but it's not erasing it. Um, so the contradiction today that everyone has, I'm still working through this on, on many levels, and is that it seems like the default conclusion is that my core belief negates yours if it's not the same as mine. Your core belief excludes me and mine if it's different than yours. And there's no room for the truth that I believe lives in the paradox, that it's an and not or world. 
we live in. It's a two truths can be can be happen at the same time. Two understandings of a situation that are that can happen at the same time. We don't give any room for that for the truth of that paradox in, in life whatsoever. Um, and I think it's a big reason why it feels like people are on such extremes right now. Um, you know, when 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 our, when our friend Jordan Peterson finds an audience that is primarily young men going, man, this, you really helped me out. Your books really helped me take agency and, and have the courage to tell the truth. And it's incentivized me to be that more courageous and that much more truthful. He's not saying since he has, since he, since a young male audience came to him, he's not saying, okay, but this isn't, but, but this isn't for elders and females. <laughs> he's not saying that, but that's what happens yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, is you get one, you go, oh, so you must be excluding the rest of us. No, hang on a second. That's not the, the, the success of one idea doesn't negate. What, what do we, what, where, where does the world get their sense of wins and losses today? Not from me winning, but for me telling you, you're a loser. And I get it and I get a pump, not from my thumb up. I don't have it. Maybe I don't do, I do Maybe I'm not doing anything to get a thumb up. But you know what's going to make me feel better for just a second? Giving you a thumbs down. Mm -hmm. It's a false, talk about a false summit. That's a false molehill. I mean, that's, that's, there's just, there's no ROI in that. And we're, we, we think that that is giving us identity. We think that's success. We think that's a blue ribbon. We think that's a gold medal. We think that's winning. Yeah, George Orwell said something really interesting about this. He said, there seem to be a certain class of human beings who get more of an adrenaline rush and a feeling of pleasure out of destroying other human beings than they do by loving them. And that's demonstrably true, I think you could say. The worrying thing is that there's a lot more of it about today, if I can put yeah. it that way. We seem to have lost what I would say was this uh, you know, very important sort of cultural route that um, we recognise the worth and dignity of everyone. One of your former presidents, Teddy Roosevelt, made the interesting comment that no one should be above the law. We all hear that. But no one should be below it either. And these days we set up what we would call in Australia kangaroo courts to judge people outside of the normal processes of the law if we dislike them. And we'll make yep. some terrible allegation. And the old idea of innocent and it's proven guilty. And the old idea is if you can't say something decent, don't say it at all. They're just thrown out. We want to yep. destroy uh, and um, it's very dehumanizing. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.